We are at Brickerville Antiques in Brickerville, Pennsylvania. I've never been here before. I don't know what to expect. It's a barn. It looks like a fun barn though. So we're gonna head in and see what we can find. Here we go. We are picking up where we left off yesterday and if you have not seen that video I'll link it down in the description but this entire section here at Brickerville Antique Mall is five dollars or less so I'm pretty excited to have stumbled across this section here and I'm a little bit overwhelmed by it all everything here five dollars or less there's this little celluloid goose which I thought was adorable and this tin type photo he was a very dapper gentleman. I just wasn't all that sure about him. He was missing the case, and I know there's a lot of value in the case of those photos, so I set him aside, I propped him up, nice and good, there we go. And then I spotted these Dragonware salt and pepper shakers. I liked the green color of them with the contrast of the dragon on there. I thought that was great. And they weren't souvenir pieces. A lot of the times I come across these and they're souvenir pieces. Um, these weren't souvenirs. I thought, you know what, I'll grab these. In the back I noticed this ashtray and with the help of my friend Peter, I was able to identify it as Fratelli Toso Murano, um, which was really exciting. So this is a Murano piece. I would not have thought that, but it took a little research. We were able to identify it and it was just sitting there in the $5 section. This was a puppet, a dog puppet. Unfortunately, it was all tangled up, and that was not something that I really wanted to mess with because that's a whole lot of tangle. I noticed this beautiful starfish here. It was an art glass starfish propped up in the back there. I loved the color of that glass and the way it sparkled. Um, upon looking it over, I discovered that it was signed, and they wanted $20 for it. I wasn't familiar with the artist who, who signed it, um, and so I did end up passing on that for $20 because I just really wasn't sure about it. It was Luke Adams, but it was a really nice starfish. Now here I was like, what is that? That looks like an interesting piece. <laughs> it was a glass squash. Yes, it was. It's definitely interesting. I thought maybe it was a blowfish. It was not. Now, all of this area was $10 or less. Um, I wasn't sure if these were napkin rings or not, but they were lacquer. They were a black lacquer. Lots of figurines and lamps. Little salt glaze there. And in the back, I noticed this picture. And you guys know I am on the hunt for Mackenzie Childs, and she does a lot of this checkered stuff. So I was like, what is that? It is not. It's by Caroline. Caroline made this. She did a very nice job, though. Um, and it was $5. I liked it for 5 bucks. I don't know who Caroline is. She made it in 1996. See, there's lots of toys there. I don't always highlight the toys for you guys, but there were toys. You could see them. In the back, there was a redware piece. And this had birds on it. It was $10. I wasn't sure if this was a cup, a goblet, or a vase. For $10, I put it back. And I'm not sure exactly why I made that decision, but it was a decision that I made. This was adorable. It looks like they were doing like little jumping jacks or something. It was Rudolstadt, but you can see there it had a crack in the cup. There was some damage on the pieces and I walked away from those. The pattern on this was interesting and I couldn't really tell the age. I turned it over. It did have some markings there on the bottom. This obviously was melt glass. I liked the pattern on that as well. And then if you look up, What's up here? What is this? Oh, it's end of day glass. This was a really nice vase. It was $10. It kind of has this confetti look to it, this end of day appearance, which is basically at the end of the day, they threw all this glass together and made a vase. Of course they grabbed that. The 
poor little bird had probably seen better days. I was trying to figure out what it was made out of. This looked like it could be Aris Prussia. When I turned it over, it was marked Aris Germany there on the bottom. In the back, this was a flow blue. That was a mark I was, I've was i seen before. I was interested in this casket box in the back. It had a very Art Nouveau style. Uh, we recently sold a few, and I know one of the marks to look for is JB. That was one of the markings on our recent box that we sold, and it sold pretty well. So I was checking it over to see if there were any markings there on the bottom, but I didn't see anything. It did have some oxidation there, and I ultimately decided to stick it back there on the shelf. I thought this was a really fun vintage ornament. This little bird whistle was made of a red clay. It was $10. Don't ask me why I bought the bird whistle but left the bird vase goblet behind because I could not tell you why. This was Bob's Pottery. It was a large creamer, which I found to be interesting because it looked like just a regular pitcher to me. But in essence, I guess a large creamer is also a pitcher. There was a vase in the back. And I liked the looks of it. I knew it was going to be heavy, so I was a little nervous maneuvering it out of there. When I looked at the bottom... Um, I noticed that it was marked, and I don't know if the camera is going to pick it up, but it is marked there on the bottom, and we were able to determine that it was Orf, Oraforce, or, Oraforce, no, it was Sweden, um, and it was a really nice vase. I've got some Gillander and Sons lion back there. And this bottle, I liked the blue enamel work on that. You can see it is signed on the bottom. It's dated 2016 or maybe 2018, so it's a more contemporary piece. But I loved the flower on the front. Now what else can we find for $10 or less? Those are almost praying hands. That was almost a point. This was a little enameled box in the back. Unfortunately, it was very worn. A lot of the enameling was chipped off of that. Here, I noticed this Czechoslovakia picture. I don't know what it is about these particular pieces that I am drawn to. I just love that airbrushed look to them and the scenes that are on them. I pick them up when I find them. There is a little magnetic Yorkie dog here. It's just a little trinket, little jewelry piece. I buy these when I find them. Well, I mean, when the price is right but they usually sell pretty well for us. I know some of them occasionally did originally come with necklaces in them. All right, I'm scanning back over the shelves. What did I miss? We've got an art glass bottle here. This one I didn't think was very impressive. I had a hard time deciding what this dog was made out of. I couldn't decide if it was chalkware or not, but it did have its original sticker on there and it appeared to be pretty decent quality. It was a wire hair terrier. He 
was in good condition. So I decided to grab him. I thought these little caps here were interesting. And in the back, I liked this bunny. It kind of reminded me of an old mohair bunny, but I think it was more contemporary than that. <laughs> I had to stick the sticker back on there because it got stuck to my hand. So I decided to venture on and check out some of the other spaces here on the second floor of Burkerville Antique Barn. And one of the pieces I noticed was this paw print here, and I didn't realize that this was a Pigeon Forge piece. I didn't know they made these paw prints, but I thought that that was pretty interesting. We've sold some Pigeon Forge pottery recently, and I, I love their figurines. There were a few clowns up here. I took a chance on selling one of these not too long ago and they sell all right. I just feel like at $25, there really wasn't a whole lot of room to buy it and make a profit on it. So I left those behind. Now this lamp was so cool. I had to share it with all of you because I just thought it was amazing. Obviously I couldn't buy it and do anything with it, but I still needed to appreciate it. Those shelves right there, um, they were $6 or what's it? $600. i am not sure, but they were really cool. They had kind of a fishnet design to them. Now this booth was interesting and I noticed there was some glass in this booth. So I was like, well, let me check that out. We've got a paperweight. I like glass paperweights. I'm trying to get into them, trying to figure them out. Um, this one was $25.95. It was marked The Country Cousin, Willow Street, Pennsylvania. I believe that's some sort of gift shop, possibly. Um, but this piece was really good quality. It had a very good quality about it. And so I wasn't sure if it was Murano or possibly another glass making house. And I thought I should grab this for Jenny, but she's probably really not into the New York Stock Exchange. <laughs> got some more glass here in the case I liked this piece but it was part of a lamp oh my gosh that cat back there I had actually bought one of these once um, this is a gut shawl cat and I believe that this is not Luke Gutschall. I believe this is another Gutschall people. Um, but they make these cats. And I bought one once for $8. And I sold it. And I didn't realize what it was. And now I do. Now I know what I did. This was a J.F. Long reverse painted picture. We actually have one of these at our shop currently. Um, we had purchased a ton of reverse painted artwork um, in a folk art auction and we sold off a few pieces. We have some. I showed you guys a lot of those pieces. Um, but that is another JF Long piece. I liked the horse in the stable. I thought that was a nice painting. This little glass derby owl was Merck Prince's house. Um, now I felt like this was interesting because there is actually a Murano derby owl. And so I always get the two confused and that's why I usually avoid buying derby looking owls. Cause I'm like, is it Prince's house? Is it Murano? I don't know at this moment. So I'll just leave it behind. Now we've kind of circled back. Um, this booth right here had a lot of primitives in it. Uh, we have some blue onion pattern here. This is a blue onion perfume, which I had not seen before. And I really liked the perfume. You can see the jars there. We've sold a few canisters in the blue onion pattern in the past. I went back to the $5 section and grabbed this enamel bowl that I had spotted previously and I was like, I don't need that. And then I just couldn't stop thinking about it and I was like, I do need that. I'm going back for it. So I grabbed this little enamel dish to stick in my basket of all the treasures I'd gathered from the second floor. 
And this was the last piece I grabbed out of here. Um, this is one that I'm not sure I'm going to resell. Um, it is a bird whistle. It's made out of black clay, possibly from Mexico or somewhere in South America. But it's a crow, a blackbird, and I really liked it, so I bought this as well. All right, well, our total spend there was $230. I really racked it up with those five and ten dollar items. Let me tell you, <laughs> that was pretty good. I was pretty pleased with all of that stuff. Um, and then at the very end, I found that black bird whistle. Now that's a piece that I'm not sure yet if I want to resell. The more I looked at it, I'm like, I really like you. You like shiny things just like I do because you are a crow or a raven, and I like you. So I'm not really sure yet what I'm going to do with him. And I'm. I'm Undecided. A lot of the times I'm like, I'm going to keep this. And then a few days later you see it go up on eBay because I'm like, I don't need this thing. I don't need it. So um, I'm undecided about him. I don't know. Um, he was made out of black clay, probably from South America, Mexico, maybe. I don't know. Um, but I'm going to get out of here now. I've got 15 minute drive home. This was great. It's a really nice little, it's like, it's not a huge antique mall, but they've got really great stuff. And they've got that, that section that's five and $10. And the Pennsylvania folk art in this place is just phenomenal. You guys know I love folk art and the amount of Pennsylvania folk art that was here, the volume of it was just outstanding. Um, but on that note, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to head home and I will see all of you tomorrow. Later. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. In case you spotted something you just can't live without, we do post 25 to 30 new items in our eBay shop every single day and I've posted a link to that down in the description.